that people do things when it's warm. <laughs> they don't seem to understand that it's very important to, to be in the house of God. Amen. Um, are you recording? Is this, is this recording? Okay. This message, I don't want to worship too long. Really, I can't. I need my son to, do, to go too far. So we're going to get in, the, in this word. Amen. Amen. Now, this is message. You know, I'm going to take a few turns. People often wonder how they'll say, Pastor, you preached on this, and then you come on back with something totally over here. And then they don't understand that many times, you know, you, you're not preaching sermons that you make up. It's not something you're just sitting there trying to make up something to preach. I mean, a, a good preacher can preach anything. So it's not about that. I want to hear what is the Lord saying? What, what is, we need to know right now what stuff is so vital. I want to know right now what's happening. Amen. So this is one of them type of messages that came out of that. And this is a spiritual warfare message. Amen. You know, we, we've been, I believe a lot of the prayers that we were praying, remember that whole year, we were fasting and praying for that whole year. I believe that's what has really, I believe some of the doors and things that's happening are a result of that. You don't know prayer is stored up. People don't understand prayer because people put the less emphasis on prayer because prayer is work. And so they don't want to pray. They want to ask you and come to you for answers. But they don't go to the Lord and seek him because it's too hard to go pray and sit there and meditate on God and his word and study and be still and learn the voice of the Lord by the Holy Spirit, it's easy to go tap somebody on the shoulder and say, what you think? And let other people do your praying for you and figure out all your stuff for you. That's not how God operates. He wants to lead you. So he wants you to develop a relationship with him. And it comes through prayer and the word. So all of the praying we were doing and the warfare we were doing, I believe, is why some of the doors are open even now. Even what's going on in Chicago, I believe that's a result of all of that praying that year. We just did nothing but fast and pray. Some of y'all didn't know you could be that faithful, fasting and praying. Amen. And there should have been a whole lot more people here to hear this message, but we there's a lot of people online listening, so we'll give it to them. But uh, this is a season where we have to understand the strategies of the enemy, the warfare of the enemy. It's thick. Amen. It's thick. It's heavy. Amen. Satan is doing so much right now, and he's marching solely, solely against the church. Don't have to march against the world. He already got them. As you see, they passing laws for him. He don't have to march against them. It's the, it's the holdouts, those that are blood-bought, born again, that cannot bow. It's not that we will not bow. We cannot. There's no possible way for us to bow and serve our God we have a, we have we have what you call a death option <laughs> yeah. but that's what happened to the book them in the book of Acts they took the death option they decided that they would rather take the death option that's what the Hebrew boys did in the book of Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego said well king you don't set up this idol and statue we're not gonna bow so what's the other option but death was the only option. Well, they said, well, go on and throw us in the fiery furnace. We'd rather take that option than to deny our God. Amen. So this is part of the uh, true followers of Christ movement. Amen. Amen. So I want to, I'm starting to, because the name Christianity and Christian is so tainted, <laughs> with so many different connotations, meaning it means so many different things to so many different people. If you're a Catholic, then it means you worship Mary. So they call themselves Christians. So we got to understand that maybe we're going to have to change some terms. So I just said, Lord, what's the basic, the basic of who we are? He said, you're a follower of the Messiah. You're a follower of Christ. Christ is Christos, the anointed one and his anointing. That's what you're following. It's very important you know that because you can't say no more you'll follow up the Bible because there's people who got the Bible twisting it. So they use the scriptures to twist it. So you need to know I'm a follower of, of, of Christ. Are y'all there? Now Christ may lead me to places I may not want to go, but 
That's the only thing going to keep you safe in this last hour is to know you are a follower of Christ because the name Christian is going to be put on the homosexual movement and everybody that's going, them homosexuals going to be going to church saying they're Christian. So I'm not going to call myself that. That's not, I'm not that. I'm not going to say I'm that because then you're going to think that what you're saying you are is what I'm saying I am. So we're going to have to learn who we really are. Now, I'm really not going to say too much more about that, but I want to give you an introduction into some of the strategies of the enemy. And this is a what I call a spiritual warfare message because, um, because of the depth. Amen. And this is a message that you would have to have some level of background in spiritual warfare. I don't want to have to explain in depth the, the kingdoms of darkness. <laughs> I don't want to explain in depth the water spirit kingdoms and all that. I'm going to do some of that because that's the kingdom that most black folks are battling and dealing with. It comes from, uh, it comes from Africa. It's mainly African witchcraft. Amen. And African witchcraft is usually the worship of water spirits. And so the water spirits that uh, are being worshipped, uh, they don't just reside in the ocean, but uh, I, I, see, that's why I say you have to have some kind of background in spiritual warfare. Amen. Because much of what I'm going to say it's not necessarily foreign to people, but it's because we have not studied and we ain't even looked at it. It's sent right in the Bible, but we don't pay attention to that. So we don't have no understanding of that. And plus, because we've grown up in superstition, many of us have grown up in superstition, southern witchcraft, voodoo, hoodoo, Haitian witchcraft, that we don't even call it witchcraft. We just call it superstition. And so we've already been messing around with water spirits and don't even know it. So it's very important that you get an understanding you got to realize that stuff, the Little Mermaid, don't come out of nowhere. They know what, this is not just myths. Amen. These are what you see in your dreams. These are, this is how the demonic realm operates. Now, you remember the water spirits were formed during Genesis 6 when, when, when God destroyed the earth, when, uh, when men had began, the Bible says, to sin against beasts. So man began to have sex with beasts. Remember the fallen angels having sex with women, creating the giants. But the Bible also says that men got into bestiality. Yeah. Well, what happens when you have, when, when people get into bestiality, uh, they actually produce hybrid creatures, uh, mixtures of creatures. They sin against birds, beasts, fish, everything. So these creatures that were produced um, were once these di disembodied, I mean, was once these evil looking creatures that the myths are about. These folklores and folk tales are about these creatures, but really these are just those creatures that were created. Now, when God flooded the earth, all of those creatures died. But those that were water spirit creatures, those that were fish-like, they didn't die because they, they were in the water. Is this too? Are y'all there? It's funny how Hollywood put it in a movie and we'll believe it, but then you're trying to tell people, Christians, they I don't understand that. Hollywood sit there and show you, oh, yeah, I get it. Why we need so much theatrics to just understand? You got to have lights and cams flashing and everything, special effects. You know, we don't have time to do all that. Just hear what I'm trying to tell you. Now, so those water spirits uh, have a, the, the, the water spirits have a kingdom, amen, and the kingdom is, they say that the main kingdom is in India, Amen. And uh, in the Indian Ocean, there's kingdoms throughout the seas, but the main one is in the Indian Ocean, and the, and the ruler spirit there is called the Queen of the India or Queen of the Sea. It's actually, they believe it's a fallen angel. It's not a, an actual demon, but a fallen angel, amen, that is actually over that. Now, I'm going, what I'm going to read and, and, and give you all tonight is a expose from a guy who um, was prophetic and he heard a spirit manifesting and speak what the strategies are against the church. Amen. And the spirit that he said he heard manifesting was the queen of the coast. Amen. Now, this is important because when I was in Nigeria, it's, it's, this is common knowledge in Nigeria, in, in Africa. In Africa, they know these spirits because they worship them. They call them Mami Wata, 
which means mommy water. They call them, they mermaid spirits. They have different names. In Haiti, it's called La Serene or Siren. So these are spirits that they know around the world. It's just America that acts like gets dumbed down so they can put these spirits in movies and have you wanting them. Put these spirits in videos and have you have your children wanting them. But over in other lands, they know these are the Orishas. These are the voodoo spirits. These are the spirits that are worshipped in Africa. Okay? This is spirits that the Yorba tribe and then worship. So you got to understand that this is very common. That's why if you go to Africa, it's very common to meet people who have shrines and all types of different uh, water spirits, which is represented mainly by snakes and that's what Satan is getting people put snakes on themselves for. That's all part of water spirit worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because these, these, these queens of the sea, they usually manifest in serpent form anyway. I don't have time to go too deep into that. But my point is, this is what has, has been released against the church. Because these spirits are the spirit wives and the spirit husbands and the ones that cause sexual promiscuity. These are the ones, that's why anytime you live in a coastal city, a city by the water, it's a wicked city, city high in prostitution, high in sexual perversion, because they draw a power from the waters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even when Pastor Chico came here and did spiritual warfare, he said the main spirit that opposed him the first day he got here was, her name was called the Queen of the River. Yeah. there. And so we have to understand the warfare in order to know what it is that we're dealing with. This is, what has, this is why the church is so sexual and so fallen into scandals. And you see the loose dressing and the, the too sex, sexual, sensual, titties popping out, butts popping out. This is what, this is, all, this is the queen of the, these are, these, this is the queen of the sea or the queen of the coast. Sending a lot of time agents to churches. I don't, I don't have time to go too deep. So we have to understand even the fashion is based upon the water kingdom because the water kingdom is very sexual. The goal is to entice, allure. This is what the mermaid folklore is about. The mermaid would allure men to the rocks by singing or have naked woman, they would see her singing and they would, this beautiful song and they would be lured to the rocks with the hope of probably having sex with this beautiful woman that they saw. Also, they would allure them with jewelry, all types of jewelry shiny objects because you know that's how they would attract sailors so this is where that folklore comes from even though Mer mermaid they put it in like a little disney character but it's really not that it's these these are these are myths but these are things that were happening in the days of noah are y'all hearing what i'm saying now so i'll give you a little information then i'm going to talk to you about the strategies of the queen of the coast and this is why the church world this is one of the main reasons for the up spike in so much female ministry and female pastors all over the place i don't i don't disagree with female women being pastors as long as they got a husband and they and their husband is the pastor too but i don't believe in being you because the bible says a woman's supposed to be covered so i don't know how you can be covered you can be a pastor over church and not have a covering doesn't make sense to me but they don't figure out how to do it and so that's why you see this jezebel spirit that rose up in the church and now you have the women in the church look, look more whorish than the women in the world because they are using the charms that God told women not to use. God, when God said be modest, it means toned down. Don't use because women have a natural power over men. Y'all there? They have a natural power over men. If you don't believe me, ask Adam. The Bible says when Adam saw Eve, he immediately said, huh, this is bone of my bone. You know why he said it. Bible says he was naked. He, oh, bone of my bone. Women have a natural power that they are not supposed to use. Remember I taught y'all that even in the book of Enoch, it said that the women were taught how to put eye makeup on to entice men. See, that's why God told women to be modest. When you are modest, it, it, it stops that spirit of seduction that Satan needs. That's why Satan uses women so well. Why do you think he used Eve? He understands he used women better. Not saying he doesn't use men, but he uses women better for, because women have natural charm and ability to lower their voice, to bat their eyes. That's how they catch men. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, not, now, he uses men too, don't get me wrong, but usually 
He uses men in anger, violence. Amen. But he uses women more in seduction and manipulation. Yes. So this is why you see the church so seductive, where we are now seeing women that strip in the world singing in the church. Right. We're starting to see them on the same stages. Right. This seducing spirit is now in the church. Where you starting to see, where you see the, the, whole, the, the profane mixed with the holy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where they're singing amazing grace with their breast out. So you see, it's like a, it's sending a bad signal. You, are you understand what I'm saying? Now while they're singing amazing grace, the men are being, the, the lust is being stirred up. Yet, ain't no Holy Spirit stirred up. It's the lust that they're stirring up. That's why God... That's why immediately when, when Adam and Eve sinned, God covered them. He covered them, would leave cover their private parts because he understood the power that the woman had over Adam. And that's why Adam got cursed because he said, you hearken to the voice of your wife because Adam couldn't bear to think to lose this woman. So it was because of her body. So God covered her body so Adam could think. This is why the New Testament talks about uh, dressing modest. When you dress modest, I, I, remember being, I remember being in Nigeria and there was a, a guy that was a deliverer. He, he actually delivered people. And he said that one of the main attractions of spirits, especially water spirits, are attractive females that are willing to show their body because they are used better to trap men. The goal is to entice men into sexual promiscuity. Sexual sin is the fastest way to be debased. Are you, are you, are you understand what I'm saying? So this is why Satan uses sexual sin because he knows we have a natural drive. That's why the Bible says that when a man goes to a prostitute or commit adultery, his life will be reduced to the cost of a slice of bread. So Satan knows in order to reduce men, to destroy them, destroy their futures and homes and families, he brings a harlot. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, this harlot that's sitting out in the streets, loose, clamoring, calling off these simple ones to come on down to my house. The Bible says her house leads down to hell. But this is what he uses because he knows that once a man, because there's a spiritual mystery that when a man has sex, the Bible says you join yourself to a harlot, you become one flesh. So when a man has sex with a prostitute, part of that man is going to be connected to that prostitute, and she's going to be connected to him. That's the, what consummation of marriage is. That's why you was only supposed to have sex with one person, because you consummate with that one person for life. Because now even scientists have figured that when you have sex with somebody, their DNA goes into yours. They figure that a man's DNA goes into a woman's bones. That's why it's so hard to be with a person when they don't have multiple people in their life. As y'all heard what I'm saying. God's word was true. That you should only be, that's the reason why if you've been in multiple relationships, you like schizophrenic. Because you got all these different people. All these different peoples in you now. All these different attitudes and ideas. All this stuff has been imported into you. And in Christ, you have to get yourself back. You have to get yourself back. But that's by following the word, renewing your mind, fasting and praying, dying to yourself until Christ show you who you are and you start building up the real you, not the you that Troy built or Ted built or David built, but the you that you are. Are y'all there? Then in Christ, you are a new creation. All old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, so, so, so this, this kingdom has been released, unleashed on the church world. And that's why you see the acceptance of homosexuality, the acceptance of uh, fornication, Amen. no marriages, Amen. children born out of wedlock, Amen. shacking up. All of that's now acceptable. Because, the, because the, this water kingdom, this seductive kingdom has come into church and ha got us feeling sorry for people who's in sin. Y'all didn't catch what I just said. In other words, when we used to rebuke you, 
and say, well, you shouldn't have got went out there and got pregnant, and we're not going to give you no baby shower, and we're not going to celebrate this. We're going to love the child, but we're going to rebuke you, like the words say, so that the Bible says, oh, if you rebuke them, everybody going to say, fear that, and say, I ain't going to want to do that. But because we ain't rebuking them, man, we celebrating it. Y'all there? I had a word today that just, I was, I get words at funny different times, but this one, I was brushing my teeth, and this word came, it was so funny, because I never, you know, it's just like, you know when, you know when it's not you, because you know how you think. If you know yourself, you know how you think. And, 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 and basically, I was, I was thinking about the church, and, and I said, well, what has happened is, you, every, the human mind can accept absurdity in small doses. This is why it's like the frog in the hot pan. As long as you don't cut it up high, he won't jump out. But if you cut it up slowly and warm it up as slowly, he'll stay there till he burn to death. So this is the reason why people are so bamboozled, because Satan gives absurdity. Now, absurdity would be stuff like, now let me show you how, what absurdity would be like. 25 years ago, we would have never thought two men would get married and everybody would be for it. But, but, but so what they have done, they incrementally gave you doses of absurdity because they know the human mind, as long as if it's not an overdose, you will accept it. So they started doing stuff like putting dresses on Bugs Bunny, just little stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, you remember the, uh, the, the show uh, with Michael J. Fox and the black guy, Spin City, the black guy was gay with the bald head. He was normal looking. He was, you know, they just start throwing little, just a little, little absurdity, not much, you know, just enough to, get to, just enough to wet your whistle, but not to make it so bad where you would turn it off. Right? And so you, through those little shows, you started getting used to seeing these sexual perversions. And so it's become normal to you. So they have been normalizing you by incrementally turning up the fire. And you won't, we, wouldn't, we didn't jump out of the pot because it wasn't burning, but now we on fire. Now it's blazing. Are y'all done? So absurdity can be handled in small doses. That's the reason why you don't leave a bad person. Because they don't do big stuff. They do absurd things in small amounts. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't the big stuff. It's just the continual small things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the mind will assimilate absurdity or, or the unusual. As long as it's not too big. That's why people try you. They'll try you. They're trying to see how much absurdity will you accept. And when you show them, and then when you clock out, they know, oh, I can't, I can't try them with that no. Let me back off. Then they back off. Only to come back with a little bit another, with a different way. Because the goal is to change you. It's to normalize a behavior that is forbidden. So think about what I'm telling you guys. As, as, as blatant as the homosexuals are now is as blatant as the pedophiles are going to be. Because they're giving you small doses. So, what, so let's see a, a little bit of absurdity in a small dose. Let's change the mental disorder Let's get pedophilia off the mental disorder list. Call it a orientation. Nothing big, just a little absurdity. Well, okay, we accept it. See, that's what homosexuals did. And before you know it, now it's like you, now they, now we are on the defense having to explain why we don't agree when it used to be obvious why we don't agree. Because once you accept incremental absurdity, absurdity becomes the normal. Now, normalcy looks absurd. So you see a husband and a wife and children, now that seems to be absurd. 
where the abnormal is the normal. So you expect people to have tattoos on their neck, earrings, and all you know all this stuff all over their body, eyes pierced. You expect it because the absurdity is the normal. And that happens through, that's a satanic principle of, of giving you little doses of sin until sin becomes normalized. And then you'll be sitting up one day like we did and say, how'd they pass that? How'd they, how'd they get that law passed? We, when, when were they passing this law? But, we don't, but if you just look back, you'll see they did it right here. Remember this right here? Remember they did it right here? See? So this is, the, this is what I mean by what has happened to the church. Absurdity in small doses has caused us to swallow everything that we wouldn't have swallowed 25 years ago. Because Satan knows. Don't overload you. Don't, th and like, like, you know, it'd be like, it'd be like, don't give you Let's see, like, like electric shock. Like, I'm not going to hit you with 7,000 volts because I know you will, you will jump off. You'll, you'll, but I'll hit you every now and then with 100. And I'll hit you again. I keep turning up on you until you get used to this shock. Listen, listen to even how I said that. You get used to the shock until the shock becomes normal. Is this too much for y'all to hear what I'm saying? Well, that's what happened when we was in the church world when you would bring Erica Badu in a women's conference. It's, that's absurd. But it's become normalized. So then they have conferences with people who ain't really saved. Teaching people who's supposed to be saved. So let's bring Oprah in. She's absurd. She's telling you, I don't even believe in the Jesus Christ y'all talking about. But because we accept incremental absurdity, we just, it, it gets to the point to where this becomes the norm. Now, this is, what I'm, this is one of the strategies, warfare strategies, that Satan released against the church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And that's why it's very important that we begin to understand the warfare. Now, I'm going to read to you. I could go, and if I got teachings on this water kingdom. Y'all can go. Y'all know, I've, I've already put that out before. But I'm going, what I want to do now, I want to talk about the strategies that, that this spirit, when this spirit was released against the church. And I heard this years ago about why the church was becoming so sexual promiscuous. And why fornication was becoming the normal. And I began to understand back then that something was released. See, see, listen, if you think back in life, you will remember when something just happened and it changed everything. And then after a while, the shock of that was gone. That's normal till something else happened. Well, that's what's happening to us. See, do y'all see what I'm saying? That's what's, that's, what's, that's what's happening. Now because Satan knows the world is so prime for the absurd, he could literally push anything in the world. Now this is why they starting to talk about space now. Because this absurd idea, because y'all already receive everything else. If you receive that God created two men to have sex, that's, that's absurd. Even nature knows it's wrong. Two, two dogs know. N nothing in nature creates anything doing that. We don't need the Bible. But, but, but the absurdity is so strong that if you would believe that, then you would believe a man can, can marry a child. You would believe a baby has rights to choose to have sex. Say absurdity. Can we keep going? The suggestion, let me show you absurdity. The suggestion that you do not need a man. 
Men ain't got no rule over you. That was a small absurdity back in the 50s, in the 60s, because, you know, you, you, you need to be free. So just a little absurdity. It's just, you know, you don't. So let's, so because you don't need a man in the traditional sense, you need something to take care of the, un, the unwanted consequences of you not having a man. So now we need to come up with something like, let's, 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 but because of the absurdity that the family is not important, we need contraception to counteract the absurdity. Do y'all do hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's start talking about pills. Well, let's start talking about that's not good enough. Um, that's absurd. Let's, okay, this is absurd. I'm going to give you a pill that's going to cause what is natural not to take place. But that would have been absurd. Yeah, so, but we've accepted that. So, oh, well, you know, I'll tell you what, let's not even go that far. Let's just have all the sex we want. If we give you a condom, then, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Well, I'll tell you what, you know you're going to mess up. You know you ain't going to always be safe. So we know what we need to give you another absurd option. So let's just go ahead and abort the child. Well, that was absurd when that first happened. Well, now, now because we have accepted the incremental absurdity, they just came out with the head of Planned Planhood selling baby parts. Selling. But is that not absurd? But do you see how we got there? Increments of absurdity. Increments of shock. Until you not. When I heard that, I wasn't shocked over it. Because I knew this is, this is the only outcome. And the woman was saying how they actually now, when they have abortions, they take an ultrasound and figure out what organ not to crush, the one that they want to sell. This is what abortion is. All of this is satanic warfare. The destruction of the unborn is, 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 is sacrifice. It's called the God Molech. It's, it's sacrifice. Child sacrifice is not new. But if you call it what it is, instead of tissue being vacuumed out. But why was it tissue? Now, all of a sudden, how does tissue have organs? So now it ain't, it ain't, it ain't tissue no more? Well, now, now when they want to sell these, these, now when they want to sell these organs, these are baby parts. But I thought it was just tissue. Now, think of, now, 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 now let me show y'all. A normal God that has love and respect for life. Think of how he's looking at this. Right. How absurd are my people? Right. Now, you think he ain't going to judge that? No. Man, you got to be crazy. So, you know what? Floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, economic crashes. There you go. But they're not calling it. They're calling it El Nino and climate control, climate uh, uh, change. You know why they had to come up with climate change? Because the elite know there's a God that's doing this. There's a God judging. So in order for you not to believe in God, they got to come up with a scientific answer. And they call it, even though climate control has been proven to be false, we're not getting warmer. We're getting colder. But they push it down your throat because they need a reason they need an explanation for the, these, these birth pains, these judgments. So that's why they came up with the climate control. I mean, climate change. Remember, first they called it global warming. The scientists refuted that, all the top scientists, so then they went to climate change. They didn't give up the idea. All they do is change terms. It's the same thing. They just change the term. Are y'all there? Now, like murder to abortion. This is a change of term. Like a friend in my life versus fornication. It's just changing the term. As if changing the term is going to change the sin. But God sits up high and looks down low. And he beholds the evil that men do. 
And so we are in the throes of judgment. And I told y'all, if you living right and you with the most high, then you sit back and you just say, whatever you got to do, Lord, is what you got to do. See, those running around trying to save the earth, <laughs> that's because they don't think, they know they ain't living right. So they, gonna, they need this earth to be here. But we have, a, we have a home that's not made with hands. The Bible say we're pilgrims just passing through. So I ain't getting attached to none of this stuff here. I, don't, I ain't getting attached to this. All right, let me, let me go. Let, let, let me give you all this strategy. Now this, now this brother, he's an African brother, and he was he explaining this manifestation he had with the queen of the coast. And she was giving the strategies to her agents. And this is why we pray. We don't just pray for stuff. Just for blessings and Lord bless my mama, bless my house, bless my children. We pray because there is a true spiritual warfare. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence take it by force. There's a true spiritual war going on that whether you fight or not, Satan's fighting. Yeah. There are spirits assigned to your life. Their job is to destroy you, your family and every good thing you ever produce. They want it to be destroyed. God gave us the power through warfare. It's called the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, it's bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven, but that's work. Amen. It ain't automatic, and it ain't, you ain't going to be lazy and be strong against the enemy because the enemy is not stupid. If you fast three days, they'll fast five days. Amen. Satanic agents, witches will fast five days when they know you fast in three. Amen. This is a war. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is a war of attrition, stamina. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. So if you are a lazy, that's why what, what do we become when we receive Christ? A disciple, a disciplined one. We begin to discipline our lives. And that's why he said denying yourself these worldly pleasures. Because that's what, because see, y'all don't even, people don't even understand the, the order and the regimen of Satan's kingdom. If you really understood that Satan's kingdom, these, 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 these witches and these satanic agents, they don't. They're not like you. They, they discipline. They, I, I remember in Africa, a witch came in the church, and, 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 and my spiritual father, my wife was there. My spiritual father, she came in with her, he told, she came in with her witch doctor stuff. All of her regalia. And... This witch start confessing how she'll fast for 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days, 100 days. I remember being in Nigeria at, at, at T.B. Josh's church, and he said that, I mean, I was there this day. I told y'all about this little small one, <laughs> small man, about this tall. But he was a head in the occultic kingdom. He came, the day I was there, this guy came, and he said his mission was to disrupt the service because he was going to prove that this was not a man of God. Wow. He sat in the audience and did something and all the power went out. But it came back on. He said when the power came back on, he knew the power that was there was stronger than his power. Wow. So he can't, see this is, this is about power. We, but we in the church, we be playing around. That's why we get beat up so much. Because we don't know this is real, this is power versus power. So he came up, so all of a sudden, T.B. Joshua uh, started praying, fire praying, and the spirit arrested him. And he came out and came up to the front, started confessing who he was and confessing his sins. And, and he, said, he said he fasted so much. This guy couldn't have been no, I mean, he was a real, he was very small. He said he fasted, listen, I'm going to tell you, he said he fasted so much, he did not know how to eat. Yeah. The, the marine kingdom was keeping him alive by feeding him on that side. That's a whole different teaching. But see, we don't understand this stuff. But Hollywood is showing you right here. I, I show my, I ain't got time to tell y'all that. I ain't, I ain't gonna go into that. But they showing y'all this stuff. They showing you occultism, witchcraft. They showing you. So this, this brother, this brother uh, got delivered. They took a camera and took it to his house. And this brother had some stuff in it. He had, he had stuff in his house. I mean, he, was, he broke down why he used to do this and how he used to do that and how he disappear and go travel and do this and astral astro project and all that type of stuff. And you think this is, you think these are, see, this, so Satan is going to trick people that these are just powers that you're evolving into. But this is just old witchcraft. 
They do all that by the power of work of demons. Amen. If they're going to astral project, do you know why they don't die? Do you know what astral projection is? Yeah. Yeah. It might have, somebody might have tried to do it to you, a witch to do that. Show up in your dreams, stuff like that. Well, they do that, the way they're doing it is because a demon keeps their body alive while they go. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all that's how they do it. And, but if, 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 now see, if a Christian is really praying, that person will be in trouble with the astral project. I, they, is this too much for y'all to understand? Oh. So we pray certain prayers. Right. Make you think twice. Because I'm going to try to tell you, Lord, trap them in that realm. Right. <laughs> See, I come from strong prayer warriors. They don't play. Y'all know Pastor Chico and them. They don't play. I couldn't believe the way Pastor Chico prayed. I said, this man praying 10 hours. This man praying 10 hours. But then when he get up and these devils start crying out of people, you realize why he's praying like that. But see, over there in Africa, they know this ain't no game. They got some of the strongest witches right there in Africa. They know this ain't nothing to play with. These, these witches will kill you. But in America, we're welcoming this stuff. We're welcoming. Come on in, witches. Everybody, all the wizards, come on, demons. We welcome it in. And so that's why uh, Satan, the, that's why the focal point of the New World Order is America. Because we are welcome. We welcome every spirit here. Same way we welcome every immigrant, every straggling demon that comes here, too. Now, okay, so, so what I'm saying is this is a war of attrition, power. That's why Paul said pray without ceasing. It's important to have a strong, strong prayer life. You cannot combat Satan if you don't pray. There's no way. Christians that just go to church, he might, he might not even bother you because you're already with him. You, don't, you, you ain't got enough prayer to be attacked. You ain't stirring up enough. Your children are on his side. He already got your marriage. He got you in pornography or in some sexual sin. So why are he fighting you? Amen. Just the sins of life are beating you up. But those that have a prayer life, they go through warfare. He targets them. And so you have to understand that your prayer life and your word life is what keeps the enemy at bay. Amen. Now, let me get into this. I'm trying to read this. So this brother was explaining uh, his, 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 his counter, his uh, contact or his uh, showdown, so to speak, with the queen of the coast. And he begins to explain what she started to say. Are y'all there? Amen. Now she's talk, this spirit is talking to its agents. And I knew this years ago, man. You don't, oh my God. Most of these girls in pornography, our, 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 our water spirits, our satanic agents. Most of them, uh, yeah, this is too much for y'all to know. I guess, I guess y'all don't want to believe it. It's mighty funny that Christians, the only one don't believe in the cult. Everybody else believe it's real. But Christians, oh, no, it can't be real. Okay, well, that's why you get captured in that pornography. They're casting spells on you. Now, y'all heard what I'm saying? Most of, those, most of those women that work in, the, in those uh, adult industry, strippers, all these are, these are satanic agents. I remember, I remember me and my wife was in Uganda, and uh, we was with another bishop in Uganda. He told us that we were out, uh, we were, he was taking us back to our hotel, and as we was riding down the road, he said, you always know who, the, who these agents are and who these witches are. He said, because you'll see beautiful young girls out at night with no fear. They're not afraid because they know who they are. He told us a story about a man who was out at night traveling. He went down the road and saw this girl, young girl. She was dressed like a prostitute, so he pulled over because he was lustful. And he was about ready to let her in the car. And uh, when, he, when he, he, he let her in the car, and she, and she asked him who he was, or something about, like, who are you? And he said, he said who he was, and she said, you're not the one. She said, you better be glad you're not the one, because you will be dead. And she got out of his car. She was an agent, waiting on some brother who Satan is trapping. Satan is maneuvering, manipulating him to go down that road and see his prostitute, and he thinks it's just a normal woman. I'm, I don't know if y'all ready for me. 
Satan is not going to do nothing new. If sex works, he's going to keep using it. That's what works. And it's not just what he's doing with women, with men. He's doing it. Even women are catching women. There's a, there's a lesbian spirit that's catching women now. Seducing women. Y'all heard what I said. So I'm gonna read what he, what this brother. I'm gonna read what his, uh, his uh, encounter was with this queen spirit. He said the queen of the coast appeared with great anger on her face, and she said, "What a great loss we we have failed. Fifty people is too much for just three years. What a great calamity! In the last two years, we had a great loss because of what that righteous man is now doing. They won't say his name now." But they call them different things. I, I remember being in Nigeria and you see uh, people getting delivered and, they, and, the, and the spirit won't say that. They try everything in the world. I won't, they won't say that name. They'll say all kinds of names. They want the him up there. They, they say all kinds of names. But they don't like to say that name. The minute they say that name, they're defeated immediately if they say that name. So that's why they're still struggling, screaming. In the last two, okay, out of the 1.2 billion souls who died in the last three years of this time, close to 50 people has made it to the kingdom of God, excluding children. And Satan said that was a bad deal. Did y'all see that? Out of 1. something billion, 50 people went to heaven. Wow. But Satan said that's a bad deal. Wow. I believe salvation is more deeper than we think. It's living this life. It's not just how come this is a great loss for us and it shows that our performance is very poor. Lucifer is very sad about this and we all need to act fast before things become worse. Now I'm sending you into the world. Remember this Queen of the Coast is talking to agents. And I need a good report back in the next six months. Whosoever fails to achieve her task should consider herself dead. As you all know, there is nothing like mercy in our kingdom. A little failure, count yourself dead. Why do you think these agents work so hard? They get these agents from child, children. Most of them are children in, in Africa that's thrown, you know, throwaway children, children that the parents couldn't take care of, orphans. They, the, the witch doctors and the, the, the satanic uh, agents come and scoop those children up, give them food, take care of them, and then in doc, in, initiate them into witchcraft. And they say some of the children are stronger in it than the adults are because the children become hardened early. They don't have no feeling because, you know, they, you don't, they become hard. They've already been thrown away. The rejection Satan can play on. So it's a lot of children over there like that. Not over there, but over here because we gave our children Harry Potter. And, and, and witches said Harry Potter was real spells. So kids are running around doing real stuff. Look at this. It says, he says that there are three categories of people. He said there are some people walking naked without any clothes. They belong to us. They are those who are yet to accept the righteous man in their life. Now what he's doing, he's trying to show you how to identify people who are under this demonic power or these satanic agents. They are to, they are they have been chained to one religious view or another. They are the one we will use for our celebration after our victory. We will eat their flesh and drink their blood and use the remaining blood to repair more lipsticks, jewelry, and cosmetics for foolish women to wear. Now, when I was in Nigeria, there was a prostitute that had got saved. I remember she got saved, and, 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 and they had took her through deliverance. And as she went through deliverance, this, these demons start talking out of her and said, we take men's sperm, take it to the, their kingdom, and turn it into cosmetics. Did you know most of the cosmetics are made out of fetus? Most cosmetics are made out of fetus. The reason why they do that is because those, those, uh, those things, those fetuses have been um, sacrificed to Satan. And then when they grind them up into powder, they release spirits to go wherever that powder go. So they put it in everything, and then wherever it go, and then you put it on your face, and you don't know why. You, and that's the same thing they're doing to the weave or the hair. Yeah. Those Indian girls are going to them temples. They're saying prayers over that hair, and they're shaving their hair off, and they're releasing. you got to realize, India, come on, they believe in every demon, millions of spirits. Yeah. They send spirits on all of that hair. 
That's why black women going so crazy. And that's why there's a curse, the Bible says in Isaiah, where our women losing their hair. The Bible says you will have baldness. Because y'all putting, putting these cursed hair in your head instead of understanding that what you got is should be good enough. At least it's yours. Are y'all there? I don't even know who told y'all wasn't beautiful anyway. I don't even understand that. I'm the, that's just the lowest self-esteem I've ever seen. I don't get it. This is mine. I don't care what you think. This is mine. And a nappy head woman with confidence can still get a man. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with y'all. I would be confident in my stuff. But that's why the, the Bible says the daughters of Zion. The daughters of Zion's hair is falling out. Scabs and patches. And that's part of the curse of burning their hair out. Trying to be like somebody else. Vanity, the Bible calls it. Vanity, it's a curse of vanity. So her addresses will tell you that women are losing their hair. Vanity. Can I keep going? Y'all want me to stop now, do you? All right, let's keep going. I'm trying to show y'all that, that I, told, I tried to tell people years ago that that explosion. Y'all ever seen it, been on YouTube, even Facebook, how these people who are not attractive, but they show you how they put on that makeup real fast, and all of a sudden they just change it to a person. They, they know how to set. They, they for, it's like an hour or two putting on. And you be like, once they done, it could be a dude. But he done look, he done changed, he's a woman. He look at, why is that? Because makeup is a witchcraft uh, tactic. Because it alters, it, it changes a person. And not only that, but it seduces. It puts, that's why Jezebel, when Jehu was ready to kill her, the Bible says Queen Jezebel made up her face. And she started trying to seduce him. See, makeup was for seducing. That's why the Egyptians were trained how to put makeup on their eyes to make their eyes look bigger and more seductive because eyes are the window to the soul. Y'all not ready for this. That's why you have to know, don't just be doing stuff because it's trendy. Where, do you ever research and know where did this stuff come from? The book of Enoch says the fallen angels in Genesis 6 taught women eye makeup. What is, then look at how we are today. Look at how we, we women can't even go outside. Y'all know people don't even go outside. Unless they don't sit there for 30, 40, 50 minutes an hour. Eyelash, what's your eyelashes? And notice it's all, of, it's all about the eyes. It's all about the eyes. Why? Because that's where the seducing comes from. It's, it's about the eyes. That's how you know if people possess, about the eyes. So, uh, so because I try to tell y'all, because of the natural beauty and charms of women, Satan uses them so well. That's why this queen of the coast spirit, it recruits women because it's easy to use you. Because if y'all get into y'all sexual charms that God told y'all not to use, you got it. it. And you know it. And women know they got power over men. Why do why you think they show their breath? Why do you think they wear shirts? You think they ain't wearing shirts down here for nothing? They weren't shirts to show their titties because they know they 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 they, they like to see if a brother look like you. You looking around? They like that. They they oh he look he look he look he look. They like that. They don't understand that they being used because they try, because of, because they making a brother fall in his heart. So what happens is those witchcraft and water spirits see them doing that and say oh yeah I'm gonna recruit her. She 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 she, she got this natural charm about her, and so. All of a sudden, in your dream, here comes somebody show up so having sex with you in the dream. You want to know who is this? This is a spirit husband that came from the water kingdom based upon the, based upon the fact that you've been into some seduction yourself. Are y'all there or not? I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you. And so now in Africa, they know what it is. They call it a spirit spell, but over here, over here, I heard some girl, remember years ago, some girl said it was Jesus. I said, girl, look, Jesus ain't come out no sex with you. That's a demon. It's a demon or it's a wizard or a witch that knows how to astral project into your drink. Come on, man. Why don't we understand that? The cult is beating us up because we, we don't know it's the occult. 
You sitting there and your bed can't move and don't know what does this hold me now? Oh, this is this is spirit. This is the Lord. Girl, this is the devil trying to hold you down. That's why you say it, Jesus it, it let you go. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Why don't pastors teach it? They're not teaching this stuff. That's why people are coming to church shouting and going home knowing they're battling all kinds of stuff. Children are fighting stuff. Why? Because they're not teaching you. They're not teaching you what this stuff is. And then people are getting entangled through, uh, through, through these shows, through CSI, watching dead stuff all the time, crossing over. They're going by these little necklaces, these little statues, all these little stuff that's cursed rings and old jewelry that's cursed and they bring it in their house and don't know that they're getting cursed. Ouija boards and tarot cards and all this stuff that the God says don't mess with and all of a sudden they start getting these spirit guides and they don't know what it, they start thinking they're good don't realize this is demons. Are y'all ready? Now it says, now listen I'm going to keep reading what he was saying. It was very, it was very good. Number, and they said and then the second type of people, those ones you see putting on white shiny clothes they must be pulled down fast because they are Christians that have not given their life to prayer that, that have not given their life to prayer fast and they hardly read or use the word so we can get them easily the second type of people are Christians who don't pray they, they got the garment on but they ain't got nothing inside they don't fast to pray said, get them quickly before they actually get activated and start learning how to pray and fast. That's why, that's why the first thing after you get saved, you should become a disciple. Start learning how to pray and fast. Amen. Fasting is a part of your Christian life. Because yeah. denying yourself is how you break the power of the demonic off your life. Amen. You don't need no back counsel. You fast. Stop eating for a while. Fast. Stop watching all that stuff on TV. Amen. Fast and pray and pray and fast and Amen. that stuff will break. I, I learned years ago, I don't even do, take people through no livers. I ain't praying for nobody on fasting. Do your own fasting. Yeah. Have me up here and sweat for hours. Come on, come on. Huh, huh, huh. No, no. They done came in a, with a Big Mac sitting right here. And you sitting, you done gave this devil all this power, gave, eating all this food and this spirit is sitting here just strong on me. No, I ain't got time to be fighting this spirit. You go deny yourself three days. Then we'll pray for you. You got to, this is work. Spiritual warfare is work. That's why people run around trying to find somebody to pray for them, counsel them, talk to them. No, you put work in. I ain't going to be harassing your demons. Did you know if, if I start talking to you and start, start dealing with your spirits, don't you know if I ain't careful, them demons going to attack me? And they, don't want, they don't want you to get free. And then especially if you're going right up out of here back entertaining them. If you're going back entertaining them by, if I tell you stop fornicating, you go back fornicating, well then you're making the spirit stronger. You're not denying yourself. You're not denying yourself through fasting and pray. You can't get free of something you're entertaining. Because the, the spirit's going to say, look, they play with me. They gave me a right to be here. The Bible says resist the devil. He'll flee. While those, and then this is the third one. While those putting on white shiny clothes but shielded with the consuming fire and surrounded with fire are extremely dangerous. This is what the Queen of the Coast is saying. They are prayerful Christians. When we say yes, they say no. When we build, they destroy. If we open, they bind and loose. They are mad people. This is how the kingdom sees real Christians. The kingdom of darkness. And they are the one disturbing our kingdom. Once any of them fall into your trap, kill them quickly. Wow. So I tell you, man, you can't go back once you've been really, yeah. man, once you, man, once you get in, in, into fighting this enemy, you go back, man, his goal is to destroy you. Yeah. You can see what happened to those who allowed the captured ones to live. They have been captured by that righteous man. Now, that righteous man has forgiven them, and they will start waging war against us. So that's why they don't never want people to get loose, because they know the people who was in their kingdom that get saved, they're going to turn right back around and be some of the greatest warriors, because they know the secrets 
and they know the they know the the what the devil is doing, and they're gonna become great warriors. Now that now it says, now that righteous man has forgiven them, and they will start waging war on us. Moreover, see how they are exposing our plans, powers, and tactics, and now sharing their previous miserable experience in the kingdom of darkness to the world, and many have been converted due to their testimonies. Go and seduce them and get them empty. Cause, the, cause them wretched with, cause them to be wrenched with pain, regret, confused, and poor. That's why y'all going, that's why we going through. The enemy's trying to make you back up off this kingdom of God. And you sitting there crying, you going through because you saved. The righteous have suffered persecution. You going through stuff because the devil know you. You thought he was going to let you go. See, that's the myth of being saved. You thought he going to let you go. You thought you whoop a bully and he leave you alone. Now that bully going to fight you tomorrow. And then you whoop him again. He going to fight you tomorrow. You whoop him again. He don't let you go. He fights. Because he knows Christians are not strong. They don't have endurance. So you may, the devil knows she's strong today. But will she be tomorrow? So, you know, let me come back tomorrow. So he'll wait, let me come back tomorrow. So he's going to keep coming because he understands the war of attrition. He knows endurance is what Christians need. And so he knows he mess with our finances, mess with our spouse, mess with our kids, mess with our job. Oh, Lord, I don't know what's happening. Then that's where he's coming. That's why when you really get down and low, that's when you start feeling all this temptation. When you get sad or you get down or something happens, all of a sudden, why is it that if you get sad, why did lust come in your mind? Y'all don't want to talk about this. I'm trying to help y'all. Why? It's like that spirit is always right. Why? Why when I'm sad does this come to me? Why so when I get sad, I think about drinking or smoking. Why is that, why is that always coming to me? Because Satan waits until you are weak. Them same spirits that couldn't get you when you were strong say, oh, she weak now. He weak. We got him. And then they say, well, you know, Go, 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 go on over there and research what happened over here overseas. Go, go research something on the internet, and then he hits you with a bam, a, a naked picture, some type of word picture, or some silly email, and then you stumbling after that. Oh, Lord, what is that? Let's get that off, bro. Now it's in your head, now he's working on you. He waited till you was weak. But you don't know that he's been strategizing your weakness all day. Since the time you woke, even while you sleep, he's working on trying to figure out how to get you weak. People that's cutting you off in traffic to make you mad, yes. to sap you of your strength. I've seen that happen to us, that happen to us just yesterday. This guy almost ran right into me. This happened like three times I was driving the same day within the same back-to-back -back period. And I said, oh, look at the I, Now, see, because I'm prayed up. I said, look at the devil. The guy pulled up, gave me the finger. A woman behind me gave me the finger in the rearview mirror. And I'm sitting there like... And then and immediately the Holy Spirit said, that's her anger. Leave her in her anger. But I was ready to respond because, you know, I ain't no punk. But he said, if you, if you get into that, you're going to invite it in. That's what it means when the Bible told Cain, when God told Cain that this sin is lying at your door. You must master it or it will master you. That means the devil is always right there ready to capitalize when you, when you fall. And so if I would have gave in, I mean, because you know how your mind start working like, oh, you think you're tough because you're in that car, but if you pull over, you know, I mean, the flesh going to come out. And you know what the Lord said? Don't even look at him. Don't even look at him. There's times I get, you know, because, you know, we, we preach all over the world, and I get emails from everybody. You know, you get weird emails. You know, people just, you know, and, and you can say how emails start. You know it's going to be silly. Lord said, Ray, don't even read it. Don't even just erase, erase it. You know, you get phone calls. Why I, then the scripture that came as I was driving after this woman did what she did was a fool meddle with strife. Like you meddling with, if you meddle with strife, you're going to be in strife. Because you meddling, you start picking at it. But when you be like, I ain't looking at you. And the Lord said, that's her, that's her problem. That's her anger. So you stay in your peace. Now, why? Because right after that, me and my wife was coming back down Broadway. You know, they don't block Broadway off somewhere, make you go all the way in one lane over it. 
And this guy done cut off the person behind me, and I'm looking at him cut him off, and I'm like, well, he's cutting him off. Well, at least he's back there. I looked up. He's on my side. The lane is no lane. Ain't no lane. He hit me. He's over. He, he, he was, I mean, he was so close to my car, and I was like, this guy's going to hit me. This is the guy that gave the woman the finger behind me. So in my mind, you know, I'm like, hold on, man. Hold on. You trucking. You, you, you know, you, you know how your mind. You, 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 you trucking. So, you know, the flesh rise up and say, oh, this going to ram him because he'll be in the wrong. And you, and you, and you going to get, you got full coverage. He's going to be in the wrong. You know, the flesh, the flesh will say. The flesh will say some stuff. That's why you got to be prayed up because the flesh will say you. You'd be surprised what the flesh will say. You'd be surprised the temptation is there. Gone is gone. He's, he, he's a, you know he's in the wrong. Gone ram him. And then he, you got full coverage and he's going to be caught. And he's going he to have to pay. He, he got a nice car. He got insurance. You know, that's how your man sort of thing. But as he was inching towards my car, I just, you know, I, just, I put on brakes. Gone, man. Let him go on. But then as he went on, <laughs> you know how your mind's supposed to say, in my mind, I'm like, see, he going to get his. That's what I said. What are you wishing on him? I said, forgive me, Lord. Bless him. Go on. That's why you got to have the Holy Spirit or you won't do stuff like that. Because without the Holy Spirit, you'll say, I, I hope he wreck up the street. You know, you be wishing bad on people. You cursing folk. You can't be cursing people. Lord, let me get back to this. Are y'all there? Now it says, it says let, 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 let me get back to this. Go and seduce them. Get them empty. This is Satan's go all day to seduce you, to get you empty. People at work, stir up something on your job. Your kids are acting a fool. All this pressure and stress is to get you empty. Because usually he has a warfare planned in the evening. <laughs> Did you not know that? There's always a war in the evening. Now, most of the times, witches and satanic agents and demons, they meet around midnight. Around midnight to 2 a.m. is when they meet, and that's why Christians should be praying. Those are my prayer times. Yeah. That's when you should be praying. That's when, they, that's when they witches go to meeting, yeah. and, and satanic agents and stuff go, go to meeting. But the goal, they, what, what, what are they meeting about? How to stumble you the next day. So usually they understand the way America's lives are set up. We spend all of our energy at work. We got up half tired. We, all, we didn't pray. We didn't read the word. We just shot out of bed, went to work. We didn't argue our way to work with somebody on the road. We upset. The boss is tripping. We get off the job. We drained. And he knows that you done lost your victory somewhere in between, you know, three and five. And so on your way home, he might cut you off or you got a call from the kids that done done something stupid. And so you upset or something. And so by, so he like about 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, they're going to be so tired that they're going to want to be just led. Led. So let me, so next when we're going to talk about this movie they need to watch, Temptation with the Internet. Because now they don't want to think. They just want, they just on, they just on autopilot. Just be led. And that's, where the, and that's when the greatest war comes. Now, the greatest war is there. He's doing that because he knows, let me sow this seed now because I'm getting them ready for sleep. Come on. He knows the realm of sleep is the realm that you don't have no defense in except the word that you have stored in your heart. But he done stole that. That was what the wolf was about all day, to steal the word. So when you go to sleep, there's nothing to fight with. Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all ain't ready for this. So you wonder, why do these spirits, say, why do people just run me? Why am I getting ran into my dreams? You ain't got no word to fight with. He done robbed you of that word. The Bible says Satan come immediately for the word's sake. He's trying to steal. He know the word is the offensive weapon. Y'all ain't ready. Let me go on. Okay. So he says, uh, go and seduce them and get them empty. Cause them rich with, to be rich with pain, regret, confused, poor. Go and program poverty and wretchedness upon their life and household by this, they will compromise their faith and standard before God and backslide. What it means is he understands that when people, see, poverty is a weapon. Yeah. And he knows that if a person is broke, they're going to start doing things sinful for, to get their needs met. Yeah. So this is where prostitution comes from. This is where people would, wouldn't compromise their morals. But if they, you know, you hungry, your lights are off, you might do something that you wouldn't do. Yeah. 
So this is the reason why he attacks your finances and stuff like that. Amen. But he says, um, by this they will compromise their faith and stand up before God and backslide immediately. Don't waste time, but strike them with death. Kill them quickly before the thought of repenting, before they think about repenting. Kingdom of darkness ain't no game. Why y'all skating on the one leg over and one leg, the kingdom of darkness ain't playing with you. Y'all see people like that now who being who's in church, who are trying to follow the Lord. You look at them now, they look, they look, they look set, they look 30 years older. They tired and broke down and bent over and, and dark looking. Why? Because kingdom of darkness working on them. You think Satan gonna let you come back easily? Man, he gonna work on you. Look at this. He says, go into the church because I now find out that some youth have started giving their life to that righteous man, even more than adults. And this is what happened with the youth, the youth movement. The youth started to get saved, and then they turned the youth movement into holy hip-hop and brought in all this word music. And now the youth of the church look like the youth in the world. So they, they, they tattooing up like, the, you know, they're getting the same curses because they brought that in. He, that ain't stupid. I'm sending you to universities, polytechnic schools, college of education disguised as secondary school students and let those Christian teachers and youth uh, lust after you. Once they have sex with you, place your tube on them, they will never get tired of having sex until we finish their blood. <laughs> now you think about soul tie, a tube, a, a, a spiritual connection with you. Our time is short, no time to waste. There are many youth among the evangelists. I hate them and I feel like killing them right now. But they are shielded with power of that righteous man. They are very hot for that righteous man. Go to Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, and the internet, and many multiple social media across the globe with many pornography images and pretend to be born again on Facebook to request them as your friend. Y'all don't know who these people are y'all requesting. But make sure your profile pictures are very seductive. When they see your picture, they will lust after you. And I will make sure many demons of immorality work with you. Once they gaze on your pictures, these demons will remind them of what they always enjoy before that righteous man set them free. That's the goal, to make you start thinking about what you used to do. So the, the devil is sowing seeds to make you think about what you used to do. You just on Facebook. Is this too much? I don't mean that. We need to begin their downfall from their heart. Go to the banks, markets, offices, schools, streets, and make even the customers lust after you. He's talking, the Queen of the Coast is talking to agents, mainly women, uh, women agents. Make pornography movies and pictures free on the Internet. Y'all ever know why I try to tell y'all what the Internet was for? Even when the open Christians... Even when they open, even when make pornography avert, make porno, porno, pornographic advertise, even make po pornographic advertisement on Christian pages. And some of y'all know. Sometimes you click on something, it it ain't what you it ain't. It, it's meant to be that way. It's meant like that. That's meant for you to see that because the devil knows an uh, image sticks. An image will stick fast in the words. An image will stick with you. You ever seen something you've been on? Even it's like on Facebook. Somebody posts something silly and, and that image stuff stuck with you all day. Satan knows. Get that image in your mind. If I found out that any of you, now this is what the queen of the coast is saying to her agents. If I find out that any of you ever walk on the street putting on clothes that cover your, your, your body, consider yourself dead. Remember I killed Jekiah for that. I found out that, that you ever go out, that if you ever go out of your homes with, that, with, your boom, with your boobs or bosom covered a little bit, you are dead. Remember, I killed Kadika for that. If you ever walk on the street with no seductive movement, I will kill you. See, now you're thinking about all these, these women that you see so seductive and beautiful and all that, and you're starting to wonder. Why? Because Satan wants them men to fall in their heart first. You lust in your heart first. That's why Jesus said, if you look on a woman lust, after her, you did it in your heart. So if you do it in your heart, it's, it's just a matter of time. Look at this. He says, remember how we captured the Americas. No, he says, remember how I killed a, 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 a Kwana for that. 
Soon the fools will love your dressing and copy your style. Years to come, they will start walking on the street without any clothes, not even pants on. Remember how we captured the Americas and other European and, and Western countries, which are the heartbeat and most sophisticated, organized, and civilized countries in the world. Almost all their names had entered into our book of death. The Great Britain, United States, France, Brazil, Germany, and the rest of them now belong to us. We had legalized abortion, prostitution, and other various forms of immorality, sodomy, and finally gay marriage had just been added to our achievement. All praise to our prince. Of, no, I ain't going to praise him. I, I, I have given you enough power and cosmetics to make even women lust after you. I told y'all this stuff is seducing women. Yeah. Women are seducing each other. This beauty is seducing each other. I've given you enough training. Those powder I have given you are very powerful. Use it. And souls who refuse to run into the secret place of the Lord and live under his shadow will lust after you. This powder is the ashes of those who fail the task I give them. If you fail, yours too will be ground into ashes. Wow. Go to higher institutions, target those brothers and sisters who serve the righteous man wholly and kind-heartedly. Make friends with them, visit at home, try your best to be always be around them. Oh, y'all don't know how the power this is. If possible, do his domestic job for him, find a way to sleep in his house, from then you will get him. Wow. He can't escape. That's one of the main ways that Satan destroys Christians. He sends somebody around you, they start sapping your strength. Yeah. They won't talk all the time. They won't, they won't, they won't, they won't talk. And you, you praying, they won't talk. Come on, let's go out to the movie. They, they want to distract you from praying because they weren't on your spirit so you don't stay spiritual. Amen. Then you fail to discern them. Yeah. You don't see them no more. Amen. You think they're your friend. I'm going to keep, can I, y'all want me to keep going? It's a whole lot to this. Do y'all want this or not want it? Look, he says, uh, I'm sending you as a flood to work and win souls for our kingdom. Our time is running short. That righteous man will soon come and harvest them all. And that king, and, and that will bring an end to our fun and aims. We need many souls as soon as possible. Go kill and great ter and wreak great havoc in Christian homes and churches. Since many churches across the world had already been captured and the majority of them is been headed by our agents, are headed by our agents, go and cause those righteous pastors to stop preaching about salvation's message. Even when they preach, let their message appear enticement and fun. Cause their members to sleep during those sermons and make them lust after earthly glory. Prosperity movement. That's what that was about. Tell their women the listen, tell their women the importance of exposing their hair in the church and the reason why they had to show off their fried hair, which cost them dearly. Organize the women together, or rather form a women committee and let the pastor see no reason to oppose your demand. I told y'all in women's ministries, that's what it was for. All that women ministry, women conference, it was the, it was the, it was a get the, it was a get the, that was a strategy of the kingdom of, of Satan to get the women out from up under uh, male authority. I will, I will convince them to also believe that the body appearance doesn't matter to God. I will also send a special agent to various churches as their pastor and leader in their church to counsel them wrongly concerning this fact. They will be convinced and counsel them concerning women dressing and their appearance doesn't, does not count before the creator, but only their hearts. That's called adopting the devils that introduce saying that it don't matter how you look. It's just what's in your heart. That's a satanic strategy to bring, to, to bring lust in the church. Are now y'all see how the church is dressing. Because, and, what, and what would they tell you? God know my, God know my heart. But see, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Not only that, but you'll see the outside from what's on the inside. But that was a doctrine that was pushed on good pastors who were trying to stop that 
But the women pushed back and said, oh, see, if the men wasn't lusting, wouldn't be nothing wrong with this. So the pastors gave in, and now look at what we got in the church. There's no, there's, there's no chase at all. Are y'all there? Is this too much? Y'all want me to quit? Go and cause confusion in the family of the pastors and their wives and children. I will send demons of Belial in, uh, to accompany you for that task. He will assist you to cause riot and confusion, commotion in those righteous churches, her members, and homes of the believers. Go and cause great havoc and bring under and break the homes and marriages of those believers and their pastors, since most of them are not watchful nor prayerful, but always busy for personal and selfish interests. Walk on the street. Make sure you put on skinny clothes that will show all your shape. This is one of the arrows we use to pollute the mind of those young men in Christ. You don't say in Christ. I say those young men in that man. We will win them once you get them, kill them, so they won't have another chance for repentance. Go to the churches and make even pastors lust after you. I will allow those of you assigned to holiness preaching churches to put on skirts, but they must be skinny and transparent. Fools who call themselves pastors will not be able to correct you since you are not putting on trousers. In other words, because you're not wearing pants, then they say it's not seductive, but put on short skirts. Kingdom of darkness is strategized. Expose your boobs in the church. Whosoever fall in this assignment, consider herself, whosoever fail in this assignment, consider herself dead by grinding. Pretend to be one of them as the damsel possessed with the spirit of divination did. I am sending you to go and to work in TV, radio. The word of immoralities, immoral and unclean program should be viewed all the time. I'm sending you to be, want, to be a musician, to introduce many dirty words into your music, like St. Janet of Lagos, Nigeria did in all her albums, singing Christian music and dance like Shakira. Sing Christian music, but be dancing like Shakira. Be dancing like Michael Jackson in the church. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Look at our music. Look, look at our Christian videos. They, they sang in Christian music, but dancing seductively. Those fools are not watchful. They will fall into our trap. Many of, many of you are friends of these new born again brothers and sisters. Now you must get even more closer to them now with cosmetics. They can never resist you foolish people. They think that they think that they can overcome your seductive power with prayers. They are fools. We will get them. Make yourself cheap for men. Destroy peaceful homes. Hate happiness. Break homes. The fools will focus on their village witches and, 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 or, or, or neighborhood witches and accuse the neighbor for their downfall. People be calling each other, saying it's other people are doing it. I need more blood of pastors and evangelists. Make sure you seduce them with your charming spell in your eyes and your shape and body and allure them to have sex with you and place a tube on them. When the altar is polluted, the spirit of that righteous man will depart from them and the church will become dirty. Appear to them in dream, dress like a harlot to the church. Show your bosom, boobs, and your lap. That is enough to get them. Make sure you always sit where their eyes will see you. Join the ushering unit or group. Go to their office to greet them if they prove stubborn to look at your sides during the service. <laughs> Once you see them, they will be confused while preaching, while preaching from then on. Their sermons and prayers will have no effect. Cat walk around the church. Even if the coward who can't approach women see you, they will run to a hidden place and start masturbating. This is true warfare. <laughs> Now, y'all don't see that stuff here, but you know some places you can go, and you be like, no, nah, nah, I know they see this. I know, I know y'all see this right here. Now, tell me y'all don't see. Why I see up in the pastor's face? That's why, that's, I told y'all, that's why I have my wife always with me. That's why my wife know. Her job is to stop people. 
Don't get mad. If we don't know you, don't get mad. She protecting the pastor. Anybody with the right spirit will respect that. And they'll wait. Your spirit ain't right. It's because you got a, a, a demonic motive. The woman of God's job is to protect her man. Witches don't like that. They don't like when they come into church and see a pastor and his wife are in connection and in harmony. They want her to be way over her talking and he's way over her talking. They don't want the woman to be right there. So when my wife ain't around, we have other buffers. I tell other women, stand right here. Some of y'all know I ain't got to tell y'all. Why? Pastor gonna be safe. That's how you stay safe, men. Don't be no fool. Don't say your wife is jealous. She ain't jealous. She can see. Ain't nobody jealous of you. She, she understand. You know why she know? Because she done did it. She know when she was trying to be sexy. <laughs> she know. And she know when a woman lower her voice and put her eye down and, 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 and start doing this and start... She know when she, she know when you start doing it, tucking in your shirt so you can see your butt. She know. Men of God stay safe that way. People get offended about that. But my wife is my buffer. Yes, sir. We be all over the world, man. You don't know all kinds of people come up to you. All kinds, especially if you preach anointed word, all kinds of people come up. With all kinds of reasons to come up. But your wife is right there. That's her job. I don't worry about people getting offended. I'm going to keep my home. Let's go. Is this too much? Should I clock it? It's 9 o'clock. I'll give y'all a little more than I quit. I'll give you a little bit more. Let's see. Once they gaze their eyes on you, I'm, I'm trying to get to a point. I want to show you this next, not this one, but the next paragraph. Once they gaze their eyes on you, your image will fill their heart. I've seen this happen to pastors. I've seen what I'm telling y'all. I've seen this happen to pastors. Amen. I've seen this happen. I've seen brothers that I used to warn them, man, listen, man, don't be entertaining them sisters, man. Stop all that, Amen. you know, stop all that counseling. Stop all that. That's why we don't counsel. We don't do all that counseling. I said, stop all that. This brother would preach, he would preach such an anointed message, and then when, it would, when the service was over, he, every woman he would talk to. And he, it's almost like this brother, he, like he needed this. Like I'm like, brother, stop doing that, bro. I mean, stop that. You don't need to, you, don't, you know, usually when you're when you on the anointing, you need to really go. I mean, I try to stick around a little bit to, hey, how y'all doing? I'll shoot the breeze, but, you know, usually a, a man of God need to go. Because you, you wide open at that point. You under the, you just come out from the anointing. Amen. But this brother would stay there and hug all the sisters. And, and it was a matter of time for his sister came. He started battling because now this woman's in his head because he didn't understand how to protect himself. I said, brother, they will understand. If you don't talk to them, they will understand. I said, get your staff to tell them. But he had a need. And see, the devil knew his marriage wasn't tight. And because his marriage wasn't tight, he was getting fulfillment from other women by them giving him accolades and adoration. He wasn't getting it at home, so he loved it from the other women. He thought, like Samson, man, I can handle this. But he didn't realize the devil sent the woman that was very, very, uh, uh, what was his type. See, the devil going to send your type. And she was having to be that seductive woman that he ended up getting her number and talking to her on the phone. One step away from... Come on over. <laughs> he was one step away from that. And he was a great, he's a great pastor with a great anointing, but that's what happened to him. So don't think because you gifted that you can't get got. All right, let me get done. Look at this. It says, once they gaze on you, your image will fill their heart and the fools will be lusting after you. It will only take the power of the righteous man to get you out of their mind and to fight against such lust. Whenever they prove too difficult, extinguish their fire 
through giving of gifts, giving of foods, envelopes with money, clothes, give them many gifts. That's one of the ways that witches work. They curse objects and give them to you. That's why people send money through the mail. I don't, I don't, I don't touch it. Amen. Amen. I don't care. I don't touch it. I learned that years ago. Witches curse money, send it to you. All kinds. Yeah, y'all got Amen. warfare in the kingdom is real. Amen. But that's one of the ways witches curse you. That's why I, I told you why I don't eat everywhere. I don't eat people's food. Amen. I don't eat people's food. I learned that. Yes. I don't eat people's food. Amen. One of the greatest way to get cursed is eating people's food. Amen. Witches curse food. That's what they do. They use food. Amen. So I don't, I don't, I don't eat people's food. You have to stay safe. Amen. That's why y'all see, you know, I don't drink open bottles. I don't drink. It's got to be closed. I mean, these are just things you learn. I've seen men of God get cursed doing this stuff. I'm no, look, y'all say what y'all won't say. But trust me when I tell you that that's what happens to you. you be over, I don't eat over everybody's house. I, I, I remember hearing a girl say years ago how she had a spell that she would put. I told y'all, and I know this is nasty, but I told y'all this before. She said that it was a curse that she had learned that if you put your menstruation blood in chili, I heard, she said, if and a man eat it, he will be attracted to you. It was like it was a love spell. Y'all think I'm kidding. Now, how many of y'all know it's very difficult to know what's in chili? <laughs> Got to be real careful with spaghetti and chili. And... Now, now, listen. Now, witches know the power of praying over your food. They know. that. When, that's why Paul warned us, pray over your food. Because you might, you, might, you might go to a restaurant. You don't know the waiter, the cook. They might have put, you don't know. So you pray over everything because most people that are in business worship some kind of God. Most, all your Chinese food is dedicated. So you got to pray over everything you eat because they, have sac they are praying to a God to give them more business. But for them getting business, they have to sacrifice to that God. So what they do is they, you know, the Bible says eating food sacrifice to idols. Well, they sacrifice, they, 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 they offer their food to idols. The idols curse that food, inhabit that food, and they sell it to the customers. Now, now you don't know what's cursed or not. So what's your job? To pray over that food, to bind the demons over that food, to plead the blood of Jesus over that food, and not be so hungry that you dig in. This is just warfare one-on-one. -on -one. This is basic warfare. I'm trying to help y'all. Y'all think he's a game, but that's why this Christian getting whooped. Because the cult know the power of his stuff. The witches know the power. We don't know the power. We just say, you get Jesus, you be all right. Yeah. And people going through all kinds of stuff. Don't, and they got you. Going to church don't know why they still going through stuff. Because you have to understand that you have to learn the strategies of the enemy. Uh, let me keep going. Can I keep going? Y'all want me to stop? Let me get y'all to this next paragraph. I'm going to finish this one and get y'all to the next one. I quit. Look, it will only take, the, okay. Whenever they prove too difficult, extinguish their fire through gift giving, giving of food, envelopes, clothes, and many gifts. You can extinguish their fire from there on. When they go for fasting three days, you must go nine days. To counter their three days of fasting, they'll go nine days. That's to show you how much power you have. That they have to fast way longer than you, three times longer than you do, just to counteract that's why the witches fast. That's why they always fasting. I ain't never seen a fat witch. I ain't never seen no fat witch. Most witches are small because they fast. I'm serious. There are fat witches. <laughs> let, me, let me back it up. I'm sure there are fat witches. <laughs> but most witches, serious witches, are small because Satan, Satan's a taskmaster. You think Satan don't give them no peace? He'll wake them up fast. Go chant for three days. You know, pray against the marriages of the church for three days. They got to be dedicated. And ain't that something? They use them that hard and then they take them to hell after they use them. That's why a lot of people in that want to get out. But they don't have, the Christians don't have power to set them free. 
They come to a Christian church and they got more, the demons in them overpower the church. Wow. That's what happens. Y'all there. Whenever you, when, I won't show you. Whenever you need urgent blood, I told you all of this is about blood drinking. This is witches love blood. Satanic agents love blood. This is the fallen angel spirit. The fallen angels start eating men. The giants start eating men. This is just, it's just their, it's just, it's just, just their way. It's just how, it's how they get their power. And, and the more innocent the blood, the more power is released. That's why they love innocent children. Whenever you need urgent blood, just walk among people who dress or use any of our materials, perfumes, lipstick, jewelry, attachment, or relaxers, rings and tattoos, and many more. Just place your tube on them and drink their blood. Drink the blood of whosoever love to dress like you. Destroy new marriages, increase divorces, make the youth and the children to disturb whatever sermon is going on, make babies cry, compel the youth to chat and browse with their mobile phone while sermons is going on, possess the children with, with biscuits and sweets you give them in church and make them rebellious against their parents, initiate the children, youths and adults and anyone available around you and also anyone that has intercourse with you. We need more agents to be replaced, to replace the escape ones. Inflate the drummer's beat. The demonic beat. And that's why I told y'all musicians have to be pure. I was, when we was in Nigeria, uh, there was a brother who snuck in, in, in T.B. Johnson in them choir in, in the, on the drum. Now, it, it wasn't the regular drums like that. It was the, one, of them, one, of them, uh, one of them African drums. It was a, but, and he was, and T.B. Johnson said when he came out, and you know, they was jamming, he said, all of a sudden, he said, my body started going a different way. He said, I'm like, my butt wasn't going that way. But the but it was see the and then he and then he looked up her and he said who are you? And he said how dare you come in the house of God? And the boy came down. He's a young boy came down and confessed about he was a satanic agent sent to get in that choir to get in the instrumental. He said I was sent and when I played this beat he 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 produced a worldly spirit to come into church. He, he I said we were jamming and all of a sudden he saw, said what? Whoa what am I? But it, it came through the music. Y'all think music, music is spiritual. That's why, that's why the church is so seductive because the same instrumentalists that's playing are going in the clubs playing. They playing the same worldly music they're getting up here and them same demons that they channeling through them in the club is channeling in the church. And so that's why the church is seduced. Y'all done. Y'all done. Y'all done. That's why I try to tell you y'all appreciate these young brothers but that's why y'all can't be listening to all that worldly music. Because that, that'll come out in your drumming. It'll come out in your, in your playing. You can't be listening to all that stuff because it'll come out. And you'll find yourself, you'll find yourself channeling them beats you heard. Y'all ain't ready for me. Lord. Um, inflate the drummer's beat with demonic beat. Join the choirs to introduce unclean music and dancing in the name of the Christian music. You men make sure you entice ladies in the choir with money and everything you have and everything have given you. They tell them the men put on body hugs. <laughs> That's tight shirts. Muscle shirts. <laughs> That's why you sister gotta watch out. Expose your chest. A lot of these brothers ain't regenerated. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, a lot of these brothers don't, 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 don't go off for who you think they are. Right. A lot of brothers ain't regenerated. They might be in church, but church ain't in them. Right. So don't be just thinking they saved just because they in church. Right. Any man, because the same applies goes to a man. If a man's exposing his body, that same spirit is on him. Yeah. He's seducing women. Women are being seduced by that. And don't take much to seduce church women because they already think every man their husband anyway. Right. And then the ones that are married don't know how to be happy in their marriage, and so they're looking around too. So, so it says, uh, what was I at? <laughs> Expose your chest. Put on tight pants. So Y'all see this style that's in? This little Corey Bot style that's in? Sleep with them. And you ladies allow the men in the choir to sleep with you. We must pollute the church. But for Christian ladies, appear to them in dreams and review them as your future husband, as their future husband. 
The fools will be carried away by dreams and will not pray further. I told you, that's why when people come to me with that stuff, man, don't be coming and talking about no dreams. Because I don't be coming and talking about no dreams. I mean, come on, man, you got to be a little more mature. You know, you, the Lord, always, you're always dreaming about something. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Well, I saw them in my dreams. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. The Lord don't need to give you no dream for when somebody's your spouse. The Bible says a man chooses a wife. That is a conscious decision. Don't get deep about it. You see a woman that you like and you step to her with the understanding I'm going to court her to marry 